Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter and our theme is God chose us to serve. In the first reading, St. Luke reports the election of seven deacons. The second reading speaks of Christ as the living stone who was rejected by men but chosen by God. Through Christ the living stone, Christians have been chosen to form the holy priesthood that offers spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. In the Gospel, Jesus dedicated himself as God's instrument through whom God carries out his work of salvation. In this service, Jesus serves as the way, the truth, and the life, without whom no one can get to the Father. The first reading is from Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. It is the story of the choice of seven men who were to assist the apostles in the distribution of food and basic human needs among the flourishing Christian community. The problem began when widows from the Hellenist section of the community were sidelined by the Hebrews. The Hellenists were Jews in diaspora from outside Palestine. In Jerusalem, they had their own synagogues where the Bible was read in Greek. The Hebrews, on the other hand, were Jews from Palestine who spoke Aramaic at the time of Jesus. In their synagogues, the Bible was read in Hebrew language. By accepting Jesus Christ, both the Hellenists and the Hebrews came to join the Christian Brotherhood. Unfortunately, they allowed their provenance to influence their actions even as Christians. The apostles had to intervene by electing seven men who became deacons. Diaconia means service. Basically, therefore, these men were chosen to serve. The essence of choosing them is so that the apostles can continue to take care of the community in matters of faith and morals. So, while the deacons attended to the material dimension of the Christian community, the apostles paid attention to their spiritual growth through prayers and teaching of the Word of God. The work that these seven men were to do was no less important as that which the apostles were doing. Hence, the men that were chosen were full of the Holy Spirit. This shows that God does not condone mediocrity in His church. When leaders or office holders are to be chosen, there must be people who understand the mind of God. They can understand the mind of God and act accordingly only if they are led by the Holy Spirit. We should also note that every office in the church is important and should not be looked down upon. No matter how little the office is, and no matter how high it is, the essence of occupying such an office is to serve others and to serve God. As the twelve apostles told the community, the seven deacons will serve the community at the table, while the apostles will serve them in prayer and in the service of the word. When you have a duty in the church, do it wholeheartedly, knowing that you are doing it for God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, 4 to 9. Beginning from chapter 1, verse 13, Peter emphasizes the need for a holy living to his audience, that is the Christians. God has called them to be obedient children and to be holy as he, God, is holy. For this reason, God chose them beforehand to be participants in the life of Christ, who has ransomed them from sin and death. In chapter 2, Peter begins with the words, Put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. Like newborn infants long for spiritual milk. That is something that will help them grow into salvation. Our reading takes off against this backdrop. As you come to him, that is Jesus Christ, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, 
you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Christians must respond to Jesus Christ in a manner that defines them as people called, chosen, and set apart by God for a unique purpose in life. Jesus was the chosen one, precious to God his Father. He is the cornerstone that holds the entire building, that is creation, and everything in the world together. As Christians, we share in the life of Christ by attaching ourselves and drawing strength from that living stone. Attached to Jesus, we each become a spiritual house where sacrifices, that is, prayers and good works, are offered for the world because we also share in the priesthood of Christ. The priest offers prayers and sacrifices on behalf of the people. We too share in the common priesthood of Christ and are called to a life of prayer for ourselves and good works. Peter then goes on to cite three quotations from the Old Testament, from Isaiah 28 verse 16, Psalm 118 verse 22, and Isaiah 8 verse 14. While the first talks about Zion being the chosen and precious cornerstone, the second talks about the stone rejected by the builders, which became the cornerstone. And Peter appropriates both texts to Jesus. The third quotation describes the fate of the disobedient who detach themselves from the living stone, reminding his listeners of the consequences of separating themselves from Christ. In conclusion, Peter reminds his listeners that they are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession to proclaim God's works in the world because God has called them out of darkness into this marvelous light. Israel was the chosen people of God. But with Jesus, a new Israel emerged, cutting across race and nationality, no more barriers for anyone. As Christians, we are the new chosen race, the new Israel. We share in the priesthood of Christ to offer prayers and sacrifices for others in the world. We are called to a life of holiness in the world and to be attached to Christ, the living stone. In this way, we proclaim the wonders of God in the world and that is our mission in the world. In John chapter 13, Jesus predicted that one of the twelve, Judas, who was at the Passover table with him, would betray him. He also indicated that Peter would deny him three times before the cup crows. In today's Gospel, John chapter 14, Jesus gives his apostles, who were bewildered and terrified, words of consolation and encouragement to keep them from becoming depressed and discouraged due to his impending betrayals and departure from them. He said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. Jesus mentally prepares them to face the reality of his coming betrayals, passion and death and to see his suffering and death as the way to salvation and preparation for their place in his father's house, God's kingdom. In his confusion, Thomas, not fully comprehending the essence of Jesus' mission, echoes the mind of the apostles, like Peter in chapter 13 verse 36, saying, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus responds, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The statement, no one comes to the Father except through me, emphasizes that Jesus is indeed the way, the access, and the path to the Father and His house, the kingdom. He is the mediator between God and His people, reconciling and bringing us back to God through the sacrifice of Himself. This is something that no other doctrine, merits, or intercession can do. Therefore, He is the way that leads to the Father by mediating between God and man. He is the truth who teaches the knowledge of God by revealing Him and directing our path to Him. He is the life that animates those who seek God by mediating salvation, which is eternal life, 
in God. Also, in his astonishment, Philip expressed the deepest yearning of religious minds to Jesus. Show us the Father and that would be enough for us, he says. This echoes Moses' request to God on Mount Sinai. Show me your glory, he says. God only allowed Moses to see his back, saying, No one can see the face of God and live. Although Philip did not have the opportunity to witness Jesus' transfiguration like Peter, James, and John, however, he failed to recognize that in Jesus is found the glory, the grace, and the truth of God, as Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 states that Christ is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact representation of his nature. So Jesus says, Philip, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Thus Jesus admonished Philip, his apostles and all of us to believe in him as we believe in God because he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Hence, to be true children and servants of God, Jesus encourages us not to be afraid, but to believe in God and believe in Him, since by seeing Him we have seen the Father, and by believing in Him we believe the Father. Therefore, we are called to follow Him who is the way, know Him who is the truth, and believe in Him who is the life, so that we might have eternal life to serve Him who is God forever. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page Devar Adonai or visit our website devaradonai.org.